this is something that your TED Talks will never talk about. In this debate, for example, neither the speaker in favor nor against the use of nuclear energy so much as mentioned indigenous communities. Frankly, they don't care. And it's not because there's not enough indigenous people affected by uranium mining for this to be a real problem. On the Navajo Nation alone, there are 173,000 people who are dying from the contamination of over 500 abandoned uranium mines. I would argue that one person afflicted by uranium contamination is too many. Here, there are nearly 200,000. And that's just the Navajo people. It's an unbelievably monstrous problem and it's becoming more pressing every second. From corporations to the government, everyone has ignored the indigenous peoples. Uranium has seeped into every natural water source on the Navajo Nation. At one time in history, it was thought that the Navajo people were immune to cancer because rates were so low in their communities. Now, cancer is the leading cause of death for Navajo people. Some say it all began in the 1950s when the United States wanted to mine large amounts of uranium to make atomic weapons during the Cold War. However, it wasn't the uranium mining alone that poisoned indigenous communities. Uranium mining can't do anything because it's not a person. What poisoned Navajo lands was the systemic neglect and historical racism perpetrated by the United States as they ignored problems they knew full well were going on. Persisting through genocide and the cruel dealings with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the Navajo were in desperate need of economic stability in the mid-20th century. Tribal officials were desperate for any economic relief for their citizens. That's why they allowed uranium mining on their lands. People desperately needed jobs to survive now that the United States had destroyed their traditional way of life. Despite promises of a better financial future, the Navajo Nation was never fairly compensated by uranium mining companies. Moreover, these companies put Navajo workers on the front lines of their mining operations and didn't tell the workers that exposure to uranium was dangerous. Companies didn't provide adequate safety gear or ensure safe working conditions. This can't be blamed on the ignorance of the era. Studies dating all the way back to 1929 detail the harms of radiation from uranium mining. Even the federal government had released a video on the dangers of uranium mining and how organizations should go about protecting their workers. But no special provisions were made for Navajo workers. No ventilation, protective gear, or simple warnings. Unfortunately, these were the only ways by which to make a living, so people mined the uranium. As early as the 1960s, just a decade later, many people had started to develop lung cancer. Adults and children alike were suffering. It was a silent killer. Uranium waste was stored right outside the mines, in places right where people lived. It was often impossible to distinguish radioactive waste from the normal landscape. Children would play on top of radioactive material. Some uranium waste was stored in big, uncovered lakes on the Navajo Nation. That brings us to the year 1979 in Church Rock, New Mexico, the site of one of these nuclear waste lakes exposed on the Navajo Nation. Today, the place is known as the site of the largest nuclear spill in U.S. history. Here, there were several million gallons of nuclear sludge waste dammed on the bottom to keep the waste from leaking into the land. The dam had cracked a year earlier and was continuously seeping nuclear waste into the environment. But in July of 1979, the dam burst and 94 million gallons of uranium waste flooded the area and the nearby river, the Rio Puerco. The only water source for people and livestock in the area. Afterwards, radiation levels in the drinking water were 1,000 times what is safe for humans. The Church Rock spill was not an accident was intentional, racially motivated neglect. Cracking in the dam had been identified by the uranium mining company in 1978. The company also knew that the dam didn't follow proper safety precautions. After the spill, the EPA dodged responsibility for cleaning it up. 
Only 1% of the spill was contained three months after the incident. In fact, it remains uncleaned today. By contrast, the Three Mile Island incident, a partial nuclear meltdown which happened only a few months before, was immediately cleaned up and even President Carter visited the site. The largely white population was compensated $25 million in settlements. On the other hand, Navajo residents of Church Rock, New Mexico, who were exposed to three times the amount of radiation, received a settlement of only $525,000, which averaged out to about $2,000 per person. And, like I said, after that it was swept under the rug. Residents of Church Rock today suffer from cancer, cardiovascular disease, and birth defects at much higher rates than other people. There are at least 523 mining sites surrounded by uncleaned nuclear waste in 2020. And it took all the way until 2020 for General Electric and the EPA to commit to cleaning one of the sites affected by the Church Rock spill. Still, this combined initiative is denying responsibility for cleaning the Rio Puerco. The current plan to clean all of this up will take seven years and will force residents of Church Rock to move to Gallup, New Mexico for the cleaning process. In the meantime, that's seven more years of people living on top of nuclear waste. For the Navajo people, land is not simply a place to live. The land is a relationship. The land is a spiritual connection and a living being that you must protect and love. This is not just the story of Church Rock, New Mexico. Throughout the Navajo Nation, a land bigger than the state of West Virginia, People's homes are contaminated with uranium. One in three Navajo people do not have access to running water. And most of the people who do have access to running water, that water is contaminated with uranium. It's a horrible situation that most Americans don't know about because their idea of the third world must be on a different continent. It's not. It's right here in your own country. How did you even find out about what was going on here in New Mexico? Actually, we had a donor call us a few years ago and said, you know, I have a $5,000 gift to make, and my only stipulation is that it be here in the U.S. And uh, I called her back and I said, listen, ma'am, I would love to take your money and put it to work in a place that people really need it, you know, like South Sudan or Cameroon. And she said, well, I just came back from the reservation and I was working at a school where there's no running water. So you need to get in a car and go out there and figure out what's going on. Turns out there's about 1.7 million Americans without access to water at home. And a lot of them live on Indian reservations like this one. Uranium mining is currently illegal on the Navajo Nation. But as you know, uranium is still no less of a threat. Our current president has slashed funding for the EPA. So even the small current cleanup plan might no longer be feasible. Hopefully, the president-elect will make things better. He has promised to invest billions in the environment, and hopefully the investment focuses on cleaning up environmental disasters in indigenous communities. In conclusion, before you complain about the Green New Deal not including provisions for nuclear energy, you need to consider what a place of privilege that your argument is coming from. The horrors of uranium mining are the daily realities of hundreds of thousands of people. We want clean water and clean air for our precious children and grandchildren so that they will have the same opportunity to once again play in the meadows and canyons of my childhood. Thank you. You can't look a Navajo child in the eyes and say that things will be better because we privileged people have learned from our mistakes. We haven't. Our government hasn't even done the bare minimum to clean up exposed nuclear waste. They haven't supplied people with running water that's not radioactive. You can't start on a new nuclear solution without fixing the past problems that you have caused. Anything more than that is a tone-deaf, ignorant statement based on decades of systemic racism. People are part of the environment. To the Navajo, people are the environment. Only when we all realize this can we even consider the future of nuclear energy.
chain 